Hey Kevin, so this is the practice of my speech. The premise is, is I'm, a, I'm examining friendship, so I'm going to explain as a kid how the story of how Chris pushed me over and I got a concussion, and then uh, kind of the, where I'm going to go with it is that I actually had a list of what makes a good friend, and then I examine them after and see where it goes. This is pretty rough, so if it's not great, bear with me. Thank you fellow Toastmasters. Thank you, Mr. Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. We can all agree that friends are extremely important. In fact, as a child, we find that different friends serve different needs. We might have a smart friend that would help us with our homework. Or we would have a funny friend that would really make us laugh. And then sometimes we would have a friend that we weren't particularly fond of, and we just don't even know why we're friends with them. My friend Chris kind of fell into the last category. He was a really nice guy made me laugh. He'd probably be in the funnier kid category, but then he slowly moves his way over into the why we're friends category. What had happened is that we were 12 years old playing at our elementary school. We had created a game called bump the person off the end of the rail. So what we would do is put a person at the bottom of the rail, send someone to the top, and then have them come down. Now this game was working great for the first few days. But when it became my turn to sit at the bottom, this is where the issues arised. Now Chris went to the top, I looked at him, waved, and he came down and started to lose his balance. So he puts his hand on my chest, pushes me backwards to keep himself up. I hit my head extremely hard against the concrete, and I stand up. This is where I cross-examine Chris as why we are friends. The first thing he does is ask me, are you okay? Of course, that is a very, very responsible answer. We're 12 years old. Thank you. Thank you for asking, Chris. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, I said. He goes on to say, are you going to cry? I'm like, no, dude, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm totally fine. I don't think he was really listening because he says to me again, are you going to cry, Clayton? I'm like, Chris, I'm totally fine. The bell rings and we go to class. Now, what you need to know is I had actually gotten a concussion when I hit my head. And if, you're, if you get a hit your if you hit your head hard enough, you can actually start to lose your vision temporarily. So here I am, 12 years old, sitting in the back of the classroom. I see my vision starting to go like this. Narrower and narrower and narrower. 12 years old, thinking I'm going blind, I would start to cry. Put my hand up shakily and say to the teacher, I can't see anything! Thank goodness my brother came that day, because he was able to take me home and get me to the hospital. Now, as I held my brother's hand, and he took me away, there was Chris. And he would lean over and said to me really quietly, Hey Clayton, I told you you were going to cry. Who says that? Why would they do that? Why would you say something so mean to a friend that you've just injured? <laughs> what the heck? Now. About my personality, and it's still the same today, is I'm very analytical. And I had actually come up with a chart on how to grade my friends. So on this chart, I have honesty, good listener, uh, trustworthiness, and how to make fun. So let's go over. Honest. Is he an honest person? Well, he was speaking his mind. He thought I was going to cry. I'll, I'll give, him, give him a check mark. Uh, making fun. Now what I meant by that is we would play games and have fun together. Chris, Chris made fun of me. That, that doesn't really count. But it's technically making fun, so I had to give him a check mark. And, and last one, which he definitely did not pass, was being a good listener. So he got a big X. So two out of three, he technically made it onto the friend list. <sighs> and later thought about revising my friend list to A, having good balance, B, bringing a nice lunch, and C, having a cell phone. Let me explain. If you had better balance, I would not have been pushed over. B, if he had a nice lunch, at least if I had a bad lunch that day, he could have shared with me. And C, a cell phone, he could have called 911. <laughs> that would have been nice. So, 
All this goes to say that just because something looks good on paper doesn't actually make it so. Adam Toastmaster. Now, just some final thoughts, Kevin, for you. I thought about making this speech about um, just making the whole premise on the joke of just because it looks good on paper doesn't mean it'll actually look good in real life, uh, work for you in real life. And so, still kind of working on it, but just say, like, have a list there. Chris passed all of it and he looked good on paper, but in reality, in actuality, that's what happened as he injured me and then proceeded to make fun of me. And so, contradictions there. And then the other one that's somewhere I was adding the joke, I'm not sure if we can fit, is coming up with a new list, which is much just really ridiculous. And I was like, having a good lunch, cool friends, something like that. Well, anyways, that's where I'm at. This is tough being funny. <laughs> Thanks a lot. See ya. Bye.